going to talk to you today about proper harvesting and handling of hops. Hops plants produce cones used for beer production to impart bitter and unique flavors and aromas. The hops cones produce lupulin, which contain alpha and beta acids used for beer production. The lupulin is the yellow sticky substance in the hops cones. During development, the hops cones feel compressed and moist to the touch, and as the hops cones mature, the cones develop a distinct paper-like crisp consistency with a slight aroma like freshly cut grass or green onions when the hops cones are crushed. Growers can use touch, smell, and sight to determine if hop cones are ripe. Some of the characteristics of ripe hop cones are that the bracts become papery and lighter in color and the edges start to turn brown. The cones themselves become lighter in weight and less moist. Crush cones have a slight grassy or alfalfa type smell. The lupulin in the cones turn from white yellow to golden and the lupulin glands near full and dimpled become opaque. Dry matter content of the cone is down to 20 to 25 percent which is about 80 percent moisture content. A key factor in hops quality is to dry hops quickly and properly after harvesting. There are several options for drying hops that growers can use. Hops can be dried in an oven set to a low temperature, less than 140 Fahrenheit, but the oven needs to have adequate airflow, like a convection oven. Hops can also be placed on drying screens, such as a house air filter, and placed in warm, dry location, but this can often take days for the hops to dry properly. On a small scale, hops can be dried in a food dehydrator purchased commercially. Growers can build and use a walk-in dehydrator like what we use in this project. We used a walk-in cooler that was converted to a food dehydrator with temperature control, air circulation, and a dehumidifier. Hops drying times can vary. Keys for drying hops include hops cones need a final moisture content of 8 to 10 percent, which is about 90 to 92 percent dry matter. To test the dryness of hops cones, break the central stem of the cone and it should snap in half. The yellow powdery lupulin should easily fall from the cone. The leaves of the hops cone have a papery and springy texture. If hops are not properly dried before storage, the quality can be impacted. If you overdry the hops, it could have bad flavor and lose lupulin, but if you underdry the hops, it could become moldy, wilted, or rancid, and the lupulin will not release from the cones. It is important to know how to visibly tell if the hops are dry. If the yellow powdery lupulin falls from the hop cone easily and the texture of the cone is springy, papery, and light, that is a good indication the cone is dry. More scientific ways to check hop cone dryness are available by using a moisture content method. Properly packaging and storing hops after drying is critical for hops quality. It is very important to remove the air from the package before sealing the package. So in general, what we want to do is to place one to two ounces of hops into a food grade plastic bag that is about three to five millimeters in thickness, or they can be placed in an airtight jar. Remove as much air as possible from any container, and vacuum sealing the, I, the bags is ideal. You also want to label the package with the cultivar of the hop, the weight of the hops, and the date harvested, and immediately place the hops in a freezer. When using a vacuum sealer with multiple settings of vacuum strength, which means removing the air from the package, check the amount to remove to seal the hops firmly without crushing hops completely. Most vacuum sealers that can be purchased commercially will not have that option for air removal, but it's important to maybe look for a, a, a brand that does have that option. Hops growers that want to sell hops commercially may need to have their dried hop analyzed by a laboratory for these alpha and beta acids. The results of these analyses will be used by the brewery to confirm the quality and determine the quantity of hops to put in the beer. Commercially hops typically contain 5 to 13 percent alpha acids and 3 to 8 percent beta acids. Only four cultivars, Cascade, Kashmir, Crystal, and Zeus, produce enough cones for quality analysis in the first year of harvest for our project. Total alpha acids range from 3% for crystal and 6% for cashmere, and total beta acids range from 3 to 5% with five, crystal having the highest. These cultivars had lower alpha and beta acid levels than commercially available hops, but this was only the first year of production, so next year the values should be a little better. 
The hops grown in Arkansas had good quality attributes for commercial production potential. Increasing the hop production in Arkansas can provide another crop for Arkansas growers and help support the craft brewing industry in the production of beer. Mm -hmm.